Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be going over what you actually learn in biology class. Now, there's actually lots of different types of biology you can take from your general introductory biology to AP biology to all the specialties of biology once you get to the college level. But in this video today, we're gonna to be focusing on that typical high school biology class that many students have to take as a requirement for graduation. Now, I already have a video covering exactly what you learn in AP biology. And if you're interested, I'll make one on what a typical college biology course looks like. But today's video is really just gonna focus on that introduction high school class. Now, despite what you may see in movies or books or any other sort of representation of a biology classroom in the media, it is not all about dissecting frogs and learning about the human body. In fact, frog dissections and human body systems were not a part of the curriculum in North Carolina where I taught. In this video, I'm going to focus on the curriculum that I taught in two states specifically because I think they're good examples of what's typically taught in a high school biology classroom in the United States. Now, this can differ wildly depending on the school and the teacher and of of course, if you're from a different country, when I taught biology abroad, it was very different from the biology that I taught in North Carolina. But I taught biology in North Carolina and in New York State. And so those are the two places that I'll be using as curriculum references for this video. In North Carolina, there are biology standards that teachers are required to teach in order for students to be prepared for the end of course exam, which is the state test at the end of the year. If you're in a private school or some sort of different situation, you may not learn exactly these things and teachers may teach them in a different order. And depending on the lab, materials you have available and the teacher and the school experiences could be very different from school to school or even classroom to classroom. Now in New York State, I actually taught in New York City, but all of New York State takes the Regents exams as part of high school graduation requirements. And the biology course is actually called Living Environment. It's the biology equivalent there. And the standards are slightly different than the ones that I taught in North Carolina. So in this video today, I'm going to be walking through everything that I would teach my biology students in North Carolina, and then I'll share the curriculum for New York State. Now, if you're in a state that is not North Carolina or New York, this video is still applicable to you because as you'll see from state to state, the content doesn't vary too, too much. And there are some common themes that you'll learn in any biology course that you take. Now I'm going to present these topics in the way that I taught them. But again, the order can change from school to school, even if you're another student in North Carolina. So let's go through the year and everything that I focused on in a biology classroom. First, most classes will have an intro to biology unit, some sort of introductory get to know the classroom and lab safety and common science terminology sort of introductory work in that you may learn the differences between observation and inference you may learn the names of different laboratory equipment that you'll be working with you may even review experimental design like you've probably done in other science classes for a long time you may even get a general overview of biology as a field of study then i would go into organic compounds these are divided into four main categories proteins lipids carbohydrates and nucleic acids and we would study their structure their function and how we can use indicators to test for them and their importance in living things. After that, we have the baseline information that we need to study cells, go into all the different types of cells from prokaryotic to eukaryotic, the differences between plant and animal cells. This is the time of year where I would usually introduce the microscopes and have my students working with microscopes, learning how to use a microscope, and of course, all the cell organelles. And hopefully you will learn information beyond just the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And then after that, we would go into different cell processes. So things like cell transport, how molecules get in and out of cells, photosynthesis, cellular respiration, how cells get their energy. Finally, a very important cell process that follows up all this kind of cell themed stuff is the cell cycle and mitosis. So our baseline for how cells grow and divide and replicate. Sometimes I would sprinkle meiosis here as well, but typically I would save instruction on meiosis until we got to genetics because it wasn't a core part of the high school biology curriculum for North Carolina. Then this is typically around the end of December towards the new year, I would get into DNA talking about DNA structure, DNA function, have students build DNA models. And finally, one of my favorite topics we would arrive at is protein synthesis. This is how cells take a message that's in the DNA, transcribe it to RNA, and then translate it into an actual protein that'll give an organism traits. It's a super fun unit and something that I really love teaching my students. After protein synthesis, I would teach genetics. This is everything from Punnett squares with simple patterns of inheritance to non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance, pedigrees, chromosomes, chromosomal abnormalities. There are a whole bunch of different things studied in this unit. And then following that, we would go into biotechnology, use some different biotechnology tools and laboratory techniques, talk about modern advancements in biotechnology, the ethics of biotechnology. And then we would zoom way, way out to evolution, talk about history of evolutionary theories, our modern understanding of evolution, 
history of life on Earth and how life came to be today on this planet. That feeds nicely into the next topic, which is classification and taxonomy, talking about the diversity of life on Earth, how we classify different organisms, categorize them, what even is a species. And then finally, the year would end with as much ecology as we could fit in at the end of the school year. Ecology topics including interactions between different organisms, abiotic factors, biogeochemical cycles, the impacts of humans on the environment, and much, much more. Now, as you can see, that is a lot lot to study in one year and it is hard to cover all of those topics. That even probably leaves out some topics that you thought we might have been discussing like human physiology, different organism groups, even disease, yes and anatomy, so really no time for dissections here. Now if I did have time there were a couple of bonus units that I was able to squeeze in here and there based on topics that I thought would be interesting to the students or would supplement their knowledge on the things that I had to teach. But that is the basic list of everything that I would have to cover in North Carolina as a biology teacher. Now to contrast I'm going to walk you through every everything that we learn in a living environment course. And remember, some teachers may teach this in a different order. It really depends on the school and the teacher, but you'll notice there's some crossover between the New York content and the North Carolina content. So it may seem a little backwards, but in New York, I would start with ecology, giving students not an easier, but maybe a form more familiar unit to start with, allowing them to learn about things in local ecosystems, identifying invasive species, even in New York City, that was something easy to teach. And then we would follow that up with evolution. Then we would zoom back down to the cellular level and talk about cells, organization, all the organelles, cell processes again, and then include life functions, things like the immune system, disease, and of course, maintaining equilibrium and homeostasis in the body and how other organisms do this as well. Around the midpoint of the year, I would also introduce DNA, and then that would be followed by a unit in reproduction, which is a part of the living environment curriculum. So human reproduction, general reproduction, mitosis, meiosis, and you're noticing we're getting a little bit more human body systems in this course of study. That would be followed up by genetics and all the things that I mentioned in the North Carolina curriculum, followed by biotechnology, and then finally a review of experimental design techniques, which we have been learning throughout the year and incorporating in all the labs that we do. So in both states, the very end of the year would often be devoted to preparation and review for the end of course exam, which was a required exam for students to pass before they could graduate. Again, not all states are like this and every state is a little bit different. So if you're interested in finding out what your state requires as far as a biology course for the introductory high school level, you can usually go on to your state's Department of Education website and the standard course of study or the standards for a biology course will be listed there and available to anyone in the general public. So if you're curious about what you're going to be learning in biology this year, you don't have to wait for your teacher to tell you. You can go online and find out for yourself. I hope this video has been helpful for those of you who are curious about what you learn in biology these days. If you're interested in hearing about what this looks like at the college level and the level of detail that you get into in some of these topics, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.